Good morning. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving and holy God, as we come together today here at St. Peter's to worship you, to eat together, and to spend this time in fellowship, we thank you for it. We thank you for the work and ministry that you call each of us to. And we ask your blessing now on this time as we spend listening and learning about the place in which your son Jesus spent time, walked, talked, and taught. Thank you for Chris and Sandy and for their willingness to be part of this presentation today. And we ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Chris and Sandy Knight have spent some time recently in Israel, in the Holy Land, uh, with a group of, um, of others from the Diocese of Missouri. And so they graciously have agreed to talk a little bit about what they experienced and some of what they learned um, I don't know that they want to talk a whole lot about how the trip ended because a number of people in the group ended up, uh, unfortunately, being uh, uh, getting COVID, but, um, as they did. Uh, but they have, um, they have, again, graciously agreed to talk some about their trip. And I just want to say to you that um, as, as you listen and learn, and some of you may have already been to the Holy Land, uh, but if you have not, um, it, it is something that I am, um, am, have begun to give some thought about doing and taking a group from our church. Um, at some point in the in the in the not too distant future. So, um, if you, as you listen to them and as you learn more about uh, what they experienced, then I hope that that might um, entice you to want to be part of a group from St. Peter's. Chris and Sandy, thank you. All right. Oh, Jacqueline, I immediately flicked this thing off. It just Velcro. Okay, so no, don't hang on to that. Then. Okay. So, um, welcome everybody. This is um, mic up. Ah, okay. I will get this right. So, um, yeah. So we spent um, ten days um, in uh, Israel, um, and um, it was um, uh, kind of life changing in a lot of different ways. Um, but uh, I got to tell you that I feel like I've learned more since we got back trying to put together presentations like this and try to organize our, our thoughts a little bit because um, I'll tell you, we were, we were busy. Uh, it was a small group uh, led by um, Todd Mc, uh, McDowell, uh, the retiring rector of Grace Church. Um, this was his ninth time in the Holy Land, so he is uh, an absolute uh, expert on how to do this and do it well. Um, so when David asked us to do this, we were realizing that we were not going to have an awful lot of time. And so um, we, I, I put together this map. Um, this is out of one of the Bibles that we have, and it just simply um, highlights the major places of Jesus' ministry um, in, in Israel. And when I realized I was going through that, we stopped at about 90% of those. Um, and that represents about half of what we did. So there's a lot. Um, so we obviously can't cover all of that. Um, but so what, what we decided we'd do is um, s start where we started, which was up uh, in the northern part uh, by the Sea of Galilee, uh, where Jesus started his ministry. And um, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah. where, he, where he started his ministry, uh, then we're going to go down um, to uh, Jerusalem after that, spend most of the time in Jerusalem, uh, but uh, we'll make a stop in Bethlehem, the Church of the Nativity, which is pretty cool. That actually is the longest standing Christian church um, in, uh, in the world, and somehow or another it managed to not get destroyed through all of the millennia where everything else was destroyed, rebuilt, destroyed, and rebuilt. Um, so we'll, we'll try to cover those things. Also, I have a little bit in here. I didn't actually know. Sandy did. I didn't know that um, there was a Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem. Um, and we went to church there and met the uh, bishop. And uh, we uh, visited, as part of this um, trip, uh, four different um, ministries that um, are supported by the Jerusalem Diocese and also by all of us through the American um, uh, American Friends of the of the American. say again yeah whatever anyway American Episcopal Church. yeah 
So, uh, so anyway, let's, let's go to the next one. So this is, as far as we could tell anyway, based on how this worked out, this was our first pilgrimage. Um, we'd been on a trip before through, you know, holy sites and so forth, but um, uh, Todd's approach to this is as a pilgrim, when you go to a holy site, you read appropriate scripture, you sing, and you pray. And he, for every one of the spots that we visited, he had one of these um, little service bulletins where we did, I will say we did all three of those, but somehow or another the singing didn't really go so great. <laughs> as far as I know, not any one of the, the hymns that we sang are present in the 1982 hymnal. I have no idea where they came from. Uh, but Tom Albinson, who's an associate down at, uh, uh, at St. Michael's and St. George, seemed to be more familiar with them. They're more Anglican style things. So he led us and we chanted, really. But uh, in any event, um, that really sort of helped kind of focus us on what we were doing there and why. Um, and so this is where we started out. So the Sea of Galilee is a lake. Um, it's you know, about 13 miles long, it's eight miles wide, it's beautiful. Um, and what's really different about this and Jerusalem is that this is not all built up. This is a lot closer to the way it would have been um, when Jesus was walking these coasts and, and all of his uh, apostles. So we focused initially on that, uh, where Jesus started his ministry in Capernaum, the Beth State of Chorazim. We visited primarily the Capernaum um, uh, ruins site. That blue dot on the left just below that is where we were staying. So um, if you want to go to that, we, we were staying at a place called Pilger House. Um, it's located in Tagba or Tabga. Tabga is um, the traditional site for the multiplication of the fishes and loaves. Um, and so we got there really late at night, um, airplane troubles and so forth. So it was dark. We didn't know much of anything, but Todd suggested that we'll probably be awake around sunrise, so why don't you go down? You might want to go down and see the sunrise. So um, we did. That's what we found when we got there. Um, just right, we are right on the, on the, uh, the sea, and it's beautiful. Um, uh, uh, the uh, setting is, um, if you want to go ahead to the next one, Pilger House um, is a place that has been there since 1889. Uh, since 1948, it has been either a hostel or it's run by um, uh, the, um, the German Catholic Church, and it's targeted really for, for pilgrims. Uh, it's a beautiful spot, beautiful location, and Sandy's going to make sure we get through these on time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Fresh water, it's all fresh water as it goes. So it starts up in the, um, uh, in the north, in the mountains, all fresh water, ends up in the Dead Sea, which is not so fresh anymore. Um, but we, we managed to get it to there as well. So the way this uh, was run, um, the Lighthouse Tours was responsible for getting us there and back in our, in our stay. Uh, but while we were there, um, we were taken care of by a group called Via Emmaus. Um, these are Palestinian Christians, and um, uh, her face is sort of hidden there, back up. That's uh, Rania, that was our, uh, our guide through this whole thing. She's um, uh, a Palestinian Christian, educated in the U.S. And at Louisiana Tech and uh, as an engineer and decided to go back home. She and her husband are both in the tour business. Um, in the process of doing this, it's, first of all, is really wonderful to have uh, this relayed to you by another Christian. Um, we also, all of the places that we ate and so forth were Palestinian Christian places. Um, we, of course, because of the, the nature of the place, we got some of the politics too. Um, and it's not, um, it, as you can as you probably even read this morning, it's not a very pleasant place right now. And it's the current situation really isn't sustainable. But we had no troubles while we were there. Um, so initially then we, uh, we started up at Capernaum um, at where, where Jesus first calls um, uh, Peter. Uh, it was the home of Matthew. This is um, a, a site. Uh, and this is one of the things that we see in this whole area is that we're, you're much closer to first or second century what was happening 
when you're visiting here than in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is under um, piles of, of different, um, uh, different churches that were built and destroyed and rebuilt. And, and uh, here you're a lot closer to what, uh, what was happening. Um, I took a picture of this just to give you a, a sense of the layout when you see some of the ruins. But this is, um, uh, this is a style of, of dwelling that was common in, in um, Jesus' time. Uh, the uh, insula sacra, or this, they call it sac holy here because it's around um, a, a synagogue. But basically, you'll have these open areas like this, and then individual family dwellings here and here. And they're covered usually with um, branches, um, uh, some mud, and so forth, but very low, um, low level kinds of houses. And what you can see here is um, that. Um, uh, village of Capernaum. Um, this is all, um, <clears throat> all volcanic rock, basalt, uh, the, the black rock, which doesn't yeah. suit itself very well to building very high. It's not very strong. And so most of these are pretty small, um, shallow dwellings. Obviously, what you see over top is an octagonal modern church, which is built over top of um, the place where it's believed that Peter lived, and then since um, the fourth and fifth centuries has had churches, home churches, built there. And so the, the octagonal shape was added in the fifth century, and you, can, and, and you can see it's still right there. It doesn't look very welcoming, but um, uh, that, that, this site has been venerated since mid-first century. Um, just all of this is just kind of going down the, the west coast of the Sea of Galilee. It's really beautiful settings. Um, Dalmanutha is where we stopped and had a, uh, a Holy Eucharist to start off our trip. Dalmanutha is believed to be the site where Jesus came after the feeding of the 4,000, which occurred on the east side of, of uh, the Sea of Galilee. Um, and this is also the site where they found this um, nearly complete fishing boat uh, dated to 1 BC to 1 a AD. Clearly, this, this is what these guys would have been using. Um, and um, surprising, and it was found off uh, the coast of right where the, this Eucharist is. So Dalmanutha is kind of a lost village. They don't really know exactly where it is, which is the case uh, for several of, of these places. Once they were taken over, uh, a lot of the villages, by the uh, Muslims, a lot of the villages just um, uh, cease to exist. Um, so we did a Eucharist here. Um, and then, uh, as I said, this is on near the site of the feeding of the 5,000 as well. Um, and you can see uh, there's, a, there's a church there. Wherever there is some, some site of, uh, of importance, a chapel or a church has been built and or rebuilt over, over the years. Uh, in this case, the Byzantine area, is, Byzantine time is basically starting around 300 um, AD, 325. So this is Constantine when he declares Christianity the, the religion of the, of the realm. And his mom, uh, Queen Helena, basically did the first major pilgrimage into the Holy Lands and started dropping churches at all of these different holy sites. And so the Byzantine area, in many cases, is the, uh, is the first, um, uh, first sites of the veneration, although typically they were, they were venerated in different ways before that. This is the Byzantine mosaic um, of the loaves and the fishes. And yes, you can buy that on almost any kind of, uh, of utensil. Um, and we got one, so. <laughs> Um, right near here also is where um, Peter was initially called, um, uh, and as well as uh, four of the other, uh, four of the other, three of the other disciples. Uh, this is also where Jesus um, uh, appears to uh, to Peter and calls him again. There's a church here, um, the Church of the Primacy. Go ahead. Um, the Primacy of, of Saint Peter, um, built on a rock, the big old rock, uh, natural outcropping there, which they believe is a uh, natural boat dock for the fishing that's there. 
it goes across and, and um, the altar sits uh, right on, on top of it as well. So, um, and uh, yes, you can get a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee, and we did. Um, uh, the reason I wanted to put this slide up is you can get a sense of what the, the um, countryside is like. It's really still very pastoral, um, really quiet area, not really busy. Um, and uh, um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so on the uh, northwest side is um, the uh, location of uh, the expected location or traditional location of the Sermon on the Mount. There's a church there, a chapel there, an eight-sided chapel representing each of the, the Beatitudes. So um, we continue down the, the west coast um, to Magdala. Magdala believed to be the traditional home of Mary Magdalene. Uh, this is a really great story um, I, I really love to give, give you the sense that this is, there's still a lot, a lot of discovery going on in the area. And um, so this is a Christian uh, organization who purchased this land to build a hotel. Uh, they get the hotel going. You can see the hotel in the background. And when they started digging the foundations, they found that they are on an archaeological site. The archaeological site comes out, turns out to be a first century synagogue. This is only found about 10 or 12 years ago. And um, there's some really interesting aspects of this. Um, one of the things they find here is unique to any um, synagogue, there's about a half a dozen synagogues, first century synagogues that have been found um, uh, and uncovered. But this one has what they refer to as the Magdala Stone. Um, and if you come ahead here, um, this, is, this is sort of the reconstruction of, um, of the temple itself. It's so small, very intimate. This stone sits in the middle, um, the elders or whoever is learning sits around the edges and whoever is teaching sits on this side. So this is a north-south orientation. South is facing to Jerusalem, north to Damascus. And these, this is a three-dimensional representation of the actual temple in Jerusalem. Um, if you give me the next slide, you can kind of see a little bit closer. Um, on the sides here, these are the arches of the um, of the uh, temple, but you kind of see there's sort of arches on the inside too. So there's two different le courtyard levels in, the, um, in the, the temple, and the inside arches are the, ones, are the openings to go to the most sacred part of the, uh, of the temple. On the front here, this is a, uh, a Herodian-style um, lamp, oil lamp. If you go to the next, this is, um, this is at the Israeli Museum, which is a pretty amazing spot. They have a scale building outside of the entire um, uh, city of Jerusalem and during the Second Temple. So this is what the Second Temple and the Temple Mount would have looked like before it was destroyed in 70 AD. So you can see the similarities here between the shapes and the arches and so forth with this rock. Um, uh, it's also the oldest uh, representation of a menorah outside of the temple, um, if you go ahead. And the back, this is the part that's um, believed to be over the Holy of Holies. And these two circles on top represent um, God's chariot. And the triangles underneath are fire. And this is the, the, represents the presence of God. So the thing that's kind of interesting about this is that... Um, Temples, the, the view of most of the, uh, of the synagogues are these are just, they're like schools. They're places where the rabbi comes and they get together and they teach. They're not a place where they expect to have God present. God's in Jerusalem. That's why they have to keep going to Jerusalem. Um, the suggestion here is that this is sort of a mini temple and that um, the presence of mosaics, uh, also um, uh, frescoes, None of the other um, synagogues that have been uncovered have any of that. Um, this sits in the middle of what was a really powerful uh, commercial concern of a fishing village. If you go to the next, there's like 40 different pools to put fish in. They had a docking area that would, would dock over 200 boats. Um, and, um, and they have uh, ritual baths, mikvahs, uh, which are fed by underground uh, water. 
so this was a really important um, commercial site. And uh, Flavius Josephus, uh, a first century historian, has described this place as the place where um, they developed salted fish for sale all through the area going north to Damascus, south to um, the Sinai Peninsula. Um, and the name of the city at that time was called Tricurious, and the name of the fish is a takeoff of that name. They branded this salted fish based on their own um, name. It wasn't called Magdala back then. Mary, Mary wasn't a big thing then. So yeah. Did you see any active fishing with nets? Uh, we did not. We did not. Um, so anyway, a really interesting place that's just been found in the past 10 years, and so sort of changing the understanding of what a, a synagogue might be. The interesting thing, of course, is in 70 AD, the, the temple is destroyed, and so the concept of where is God for the Jew, uh, Jewish people, this kind of suggests that they might have already made um, that leap. Um, in any event, Bethlehem, uh, this was a very interesting part of the stop. Um, so the Church of the Nativity, this is um, commissioned by Constantine um, uh, in 325. Um, this is the only church that still has um, uh, in these, these areas here, these stones in here and these stones here are original to the Byzantine area, era. Um, the rest has been added to um, during the Crusades and so forth, but this represents the oldest um, uh, church in the world. Uh, this is uh, Manger Square, just kind of changing your focus. Manger Square is full of people on Christmas Eve singing Christmas carols. And um, you can see the doorway is kind of, kind of odd. Uh, you can see, back up, you can see a medieval archway here. It looks like it's all been filled in and then a smaller door is there. Um, they tell us that the reason for this was to keep the Crusaders' horses out. Um, which you can see, it's, it's pretty short. I have a picture of Tom Albinson. He's 6'6", he's six, six, so I wanted to get a picture of him going in here. This is, this is known as a door of humility. So you, you walk through this door almost on your knees and directly into the nave of the, of the church, which is Greek Orthodox, all kinds of uh, bells and whistles. Um, most of these places will have some area that that highlights a Byzantine mosaic or something that they're holding on to. So this is run by um, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Roman Catholic, and the uh, Armenian Church. And they all um, are responsible for what goes on here. Um, this is where uh, the, the original nativity is set up, the smiling Madonna, she just had a baby. Um, and um, there is a cave, um, a grotto, where um, they believe and the, the traditional side of the nativity is. Um, this is the only place we kind of ran into um, some lines. Um, this could be a super spreader event, but we didn't get it there. Um, we had our masks on. So this is the, the altar of the nativity. Um, if you give me the next slide, um, this, this is the nativity itself. And what I, the only thing I want to point out, really, it's, it's very beautiful, but also it doesn't look like your typical kind of, of um, nativity scene. It's a cave. And um, that's one of the things that we learned here is that, first of all, there's no wood here. There's olive wood, but it's mostly stones. And most of the people living in first century here were living in caves. And so this is a cave. It's got all the right animals. Uh, but the animals are on the inside. They bring the animals in at night to protect the animals and also provide heat. And then um, uh, the, typically the manger is right in the middle because animals are facing out. And um, so this was uh, kind of an interesting concept for us that, that um, the nativity and basically Mary's home, Joseph's home, which are all venerated sites, are caves. Um, Underneath, they have uh, what I call veneration ports. Um, you can stick your hand down through that star and touch the, the yeah, right. <laughs> touch, God only knows. Back up a second. <laughs> um, but there is uh, that star on the bottom is, uh, uh, it's 14, um, 14 points on the star that represent 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to 
the Babylonian exile and 14 generations from the Babylonian return to Jesus. They told us, so I figured I should remember it. <laughs> um, also, um, sort of marbled over, but the place, the, the, the traditional site of where Jesus was laid, um, this connects right up to St. Catherine's Church behind this. So you walk through the cave, and then you, you walk right into St. Catherine's Church. And in St. Catherine's Church, every Christmas Eve, they bring a very blonde, blue-eyed Jesus baby to put right there. So we're, we're jumping to Jerusalem. That isn't too bad. Um, basically, our focus here is going to be mostly um, uh, the uh, uh, Holy Week, OK? So this is the, the traditional palm um, uh, entrance to uh, Jerusalem. We come down here to the right-hand side is the, uh, is the Mount of Olives. When you get to the bottom on your south side, first of all, when you get to the bottom, go ahead. You, what you see is the, the, the golden gate uh, of the major entrance, uh, which is obviously closed now, but the major entrance to Jerusalem. So this is all, one of the things we get about this is that it's all very close. Um, this is all within walking distance. It's not, you know, it's, it's and, and especially the whole concept of Holy Week. The fact is it's, it's taking place all inside the spot where we call Jerusalem today, and it's all very, really populated. Right here is the, the uh, Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, you give me the next slide. Um, and there's a church there, not surprisingly. Um, this is called the Church of All Nations. Um, it is called that because um, all nations have, uh, there's a huge variety of nations that have provided funding and, and um, artwork and so forth for this um, uh, really amazing uh, mosaics and, and so forth. Um, and right next to it is a big, um, big olive grove. This is the Mount of Olives. Um, Gethsemane translates to olive press. So that's, that's what was happening here. There's a lot of old olive trees here. Nobody says they're 2,000 years old. But um, I think the next slide um, is, is labeled as the oldest one there. It looks pretty old. Um, right next to that is, is the, uh, the uh, traditional site of where Jesus prayed. Um, and um, inside uh, the, the church, a huge mosaic representing Jesus um, praying on the stone. Um, you can go next. <clears throat> and then, and the altar is built on, again, the traditional outcropping of rock that uh, Jesus prostrated himself on and, and asked to be relieved. Um, the inside of the church is really interesting. Um, these are alabaster windows um, that um, very, very purple very, and um, very not well lit at all, but you get a really interesting purple view of the inside of the church. Go ahead. And this is um, the site also, of course, where um, Judas uh, betrays Jesus. And from here, Jesus um, is taken to Caiaphas. And this is, um, today, it's uh, uh, um, venerated as the St. Saint, Saint Peter's in Gallicantum. Um, that's Latin referencing the rooster. Um, and this is where um, Jesus appears to Caiaphas. He's sentenced to death by the Sanhedrin. And Peter um, does his uh, denying. Um, and so this is a, uh, a relatively modern church. Um, in uh, the late 1800s, this site was uncovered. And underneath this church is an incredible um, uh, place to uh, uh, hold captives. Um, this is the doorway of the church. And um, this is a, a first century roadway um, that, that uh, this side of it is, is completely first century. And this would have been the roadway that Jesus went to the Last Supper, came back to the Garden of Gethsemane, and then was brought back up this road to Caiaphas. And that's um, captured here in this frieze on the wall. Um, so this was uncovered in the late 1800s. And what, uh, this is an entrance to a pit. And um, uh, they found 
engraved on this pit three Byzantine crosses, so that, that's 350 BC, or, or AD, I should say, common era. And this is from the pit below. You can kind of see the crosses. I think the next picture highlights it a little bit. These little Jerusalem-like crosses. Um, and the, as you go into this area, you find that it's a, it's a dungeon. Uh, there's places where uh, prisoners are tied to the roof or tied to the wall. And um, this is the pit that um, is, uh, that, that entranceway uh, goes into. Um, really um, kind, of, uh, kind of spooky, but this is, this is why this site <clears throat> has been venerated. Clearly, it was being venerated um, uh, in the Byzantine area, era, and um, this fits a lot of the story of how um, Jesus was held and um, prior to his crucifixion. Oh. This gives a whole, for me, they have this psalm on the wall, too, but it gave to me a whole different meaning of this psalm. I'm just going to read verse, this is 88, verses 3 and 4, when it says, I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. So the way Jesus was held was he, they, they lowered him by his armpits into this pit, and that's how he was held. Um, before, before he was he was crucified. So it was a, it was a dark. This, that's that's the way they did it. I mean, that, it, you know, you, you think of a dungeon with the jail doors, and that's not the way it was. Ooh. More caves. So we can go through this. One of my tricks when I. When I'm taking photos, I always try to, I don't have time to read most of these things, but I usually um, take pictures of them, so I read them when I come back. But you can go to the next slide. This gives a whole description of the pit area and so forth. And this is the, the, um, the Byzantine um, church um, foundations, and you can still see them uh, in the outside of, the, of the, where the church resides today. So interesting, and then here's the, the money slide. This is where Peter does his final denial. And again, the closeness of this area, from, from where that um, uh, statue sits, you can look over and that's the, the Mount of Olives on the, on the hillside. You can see on the left, the dome is um, El Aqsa Mosque, Mosque, so the Temple Mount is just to the left here. Um, dome of the Rock is uh, the, gold, uh, the gold dome. So um, this is where we were staying, at the Gloria Hotel. If you go to the next place, I'll, I'll just kind of give you a, a setup of the, of the city. Um, so this is a north-south orientation. Um, so Mount of Olives is over here. This is the Temple Mount. Um, and Al-Aqsa Moth is the dome. Um, the western wall, so we'll show some pictures of the rest, western wall. That's all that remains of the second temple. Um, this purple line is the Via Della Rosa, so it enters um, at the gate, it's either called St. Stephen's Gate or it's associated with the, um, the Sheep Gate. This was where they brought the sheep for uh, sacrifice. And it goes on up here and ends at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, uh, amazing site there, probably the most venerated site in Christianity. Um, this is the Gloria Hotel. It's about a 10 minute walk from the, ho from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So we spent a lot of time there every night We'd come back and Todd would say, anybody want to go to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre? And we'd say, so, sure, we'll walk over. And we sat through a Greek Orthodox Vesper service. We didn't know it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's a very, very interesting um, spot. Um, so here's, as you come into the Western Wall, this is how it exists today. Um, the whole point of the Western Wall is Jews, it's the closest they could have gotten to the Temple Holy of Holies. The Temple of Holy of Holies backed up to that Western Wall. And um, uh, they could, of course, never go into the Holy of Holies. So this is an extremely holy place that's close to where they were located. Um, if you go to the next slide, next slide. Again, this is the Israel Museum. So again, it gives you a, a sort of a sense. This is from the south side of the city, uh, the Kidron Valley, Mount of Olives on this side. Um, this is the city of David, the earliest part of the city, Lower Jerusalem, and then the Temple Mount is just up north. If you come again, 
Um, so this is that western wall and the two entrances here and here. This is closed now. This is the Israeli checkpoint for all Muslims to get onto the holy site. And this is the, the corner of that today, archeological um, digs around the outside. Um, and this is that, um, uh, the, the part of the wall um, that they're praying at. And also you can go in underneath here and pray um, uh, in the foundations. And there's a lot of praying going on and it's not particularly organized uh, that any way that we knew. Um, but the, um, uh, this is the checkpoint. It's um, as obnoxious as you might imagine um, to get in there. Uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque, um, we'd been in a couple of mosques. We did not, this was not a time that we were being invited to come in. This is just before Ramadan started. And so uh, this is also obviously the site where there's been a lot of unrest over the past couple of weeks. Um, the Dome of the Rock in the front is the, uh, the fountains for, uh, for ritual cleansing. Um, Dome of the Rock, all Abrahamic um, uh, religions claim it. Um, uh, this is where Abraham sacrificed either Isaac or was about to sacrifice either Isaac or Ishmael, depending on whether you're a Muslim or a Christian, also where Jesus prayed. And from behind that, you can look here and see the two domes of the um, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So it's, again, it's all pretty close. Um, this is back at the Israeli Museum. This is the northwest corner of, of Israel, uh, excuse me, of Jerusalem. This is what they call the second wall um, that was added by Herod, I believe. And if you give me the next slide back up right here, um, on that west side is, is Calvary or Golgotha. So this is where Jesus was um, traditionally crucified. If you come to the next slide, that is, um, this is the site. So again, I always had in my mind the vision of Jesus is all alone on a rock hill somewhere. But this is obviously right in the pathway of commerce. People are coming and going right by there. People are living right here. And that's where they crucified people. <clears throat> so the Church of the Holy Sepulcher is built over top of that site. Um, what you can see here, the Golgotha where the cross is, um, and then just right next to it, really down the hill, is, uh, was Joseph of Arimathea's tomb, which he gave to Jesus. And um, when we did the Stations of the Cross, we come in at a higher level in the back of the church on, the, on one of the roofs. Um, so this is where we could see um, the, the first dome. And when we get, we, we ended up coming out that doorway and right here in the corner, that small dome is, um, uh, that is the stairway to Calvary, Calvary or Golgotha. So if you walk up those, back up. <laughs> if you walk up those, uh, those steps, that takes you right into the, um, uh, uh, the, the Roman Catholic altar. Um, I wanted to just mention the politics of this site. So um, the three that I said before, um, the, uh, the, the Greek Orthodox, Roman Catholic, and Armenian churches, plus the Syriac or Syrian church, Ethiopian and Coptic churches, um, all have the say on what goes on inside of this church. None of them have the keys. The keys to the church are held by a family of Muslims that have been associated with Jerusalem for thousands of years. And um, we apparently met one of that family members and he gave us a tour through there. And I was thinking it was, it was all kind of very interesting. Um, circled there is the immovable ladder. Um, 1950, or 1757, from then forward, um, they, um, there is a status quo that all six of these um, religious, Christian religions, um, have agreed to not change anything on the inside of this church unless all six agree. Um, not a lot has happened in there. <laughs> um, and as an example of that, the immovable ladder, that ladder has been there for 200 years uh, um, because they can't agree. Um, that was, apparently that's where the Armenians came outside to kind of sun themselves on that shop, but it crosses over some responsibility area of Syrians and so it's a problem. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. So this is the, this is, um, uh, the Roman Catholic um, altar as you come in. Um, you give me the next slide. Um, so Jesus being um, crucified. The next is the Madonna with the sword piercing her heart. Um, this is the Greek Orthodox altar of the crucifixion, which out front you can't see a thing. I mean, it's, it's all kinds of stuff hanging and whatever. But again, there is a, um, the, it's a very two-dimensional, back up, very two-dimensional <laughs> crucifix sitting on the rock of Golgotha. On either side of that are plexiglass um, uh, openings so that you can see the, the rocks. And it's got a veneration port there where, again, you can stick your hand down in there and touch the uh, rock that um, the cross is mounted on. Um, so uh, down the stairs then, um, off of the mount, uh, there is this huge mosaic of Jesus coming off the cross and being prepared for, um, for burial. You can go through these. And, um, <clears throat> and the stone of unction, traditionally the stone that Jesus would have been laid on to be prepared. And this is what they call the edicule or, or shrine. Um, inside that is the rock, the traditional rock that was in front of the tomb and the tomb itself. Um, behind is, um, uh, uh, back up one, that's a, a Coptic um, altar that touches the, uh, the, the tomb from the back side of this, so everybody had a spot. And um, right behind this, um, is a, um, a first century tomb. It's set up with six um, uh, cap capsules, four of which are filled. This is traditionally the site now of where Jesus, uh, Joseph of, uh, of Arimathea would have been buried, um, seeing as he gave his tomb to, uh, some, uh, to Jesus. And I just threw that slide in. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, this is um, uh, Crusader graffiti as you go down um, some of the stairs to some of the subterranean areas. Um, well, and that was where they, uh, they believed that they actually found the cross. St. Helena found the cross it was down in that chapel. So that's all yeah. the crosses. Yeah. Um, you can bruise through here. We love the food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have got some really good Israeli cookbooks. Uh, this is an interesting way to cook um, chicken in a pit, um, and that is awesome. Um, that's, uh, so let's see what's that. Yeah, Rania, and, and let's see, more food, more food. Um, so uh, Cathedral Church of St. George the Martyr, this is, uh, this is our church. Um, this is uh, the Diocese of Jerusalem. There's St. George's College right here. Um, you all can go take courses there if you want. Um, so uh, the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem covers uh, five different um, uh, countries. There's 5,000 Christians. Um, they are, represent less than 1.5% of the population of this whole area, so a minority of minorities. Um, this is the new... Palestinian uh, bishop, really nice guy. You can cruise through these. Uh, Missouri's represented. Missouri's represented. We have a, a cushion right front row, front row. Very good. For, uh, these, I'll go through these quickly. Uh, four different charities that we visited. Um, this is a, a, a rehabilitation site. Back up a second. Uh, rehabilitation for um, uh, behavioral problems, uh, physical problems, uh, verbal problems. Um, this was probably the toughest. Um, uh, this is uh, St. Vincent's. Uh, this is an orphanage um, right in the middle of a Muslim area. And Muslims, there is no such thing as adoption in the Muslim culture. Uh, but there is uh, such thing as um, children born out of wedlock. Um, usually uh, family abuse, and those children can't be adopted, and they're typically dropped off, literally dropped off at the front door, and um, they take care of them f until they're six, and then there's another place they go until they're 18, and then they're on their own. Um, anyway, this is, it was, that was a tough one. And this is part of what we support with our Good Friday offer. Um, 
we are running, we are right at 10 o'clock. So um, uh, we can stop here, and um, if there are any questions, um, we'll hang around and answer any of them that you have, that we can. Thank you.